Hello shipmates, I'm Dan and welcome to BMD's breakdown of Battleship. In this episode, Rihanna points at a chicken and a man points at a giant space crab. So we begin our breakdown by meeting our crew as they're having a good time at some fancy cocktail party over in Hawaii. Now the Navy loves throwing these kinds of parties, mostly to host dignitaries on board our ships whilst deployed overseas. They're usually good for canapes, cheap wine, and occasionally some tots of rum. Now, as you can see, everyone's having a good time, except for this bloke, who looks like he's about to kick off at Rihanna. I hate the Okay, well that seems a bit juvenile, wouldn't you say? Go mess with him, see what happens. Why? Do it. Chicken. Kentucky Fried Chicken. Yeah, I love it. It's two pieces. You look like Colonel Sanders, actually. He was a handsome man. I'll give you a quick rundown of this complex and nuanced movie's plot. So it turns out that Sam here wants the LT to put a ring on it, but her old man Neeson is having none of it. Mostly because her fella, Hopper, is a bit of a tool. If you do end up throwing your handbags at each other, like Hopper and Nagata, then you could well end up at Defaulter's table. Yes, it won't be in front of an admiral, unless you happen to be a captain yourself, but it would be in front of your executive officer or captain, depending on the seriousness. Taking the piss out of proceedings is pretty much like slapping the admiral or captain in the face, and if you value your pay and freedom, definitely not a good idea. You both think this is a joke, and you're very much mistaken. This will not happen again. Do I make myself clear? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Gentlemen, give me a minute with Mr. Hopper there. Like most things American, bigger is better. And in the case of the aircraft carrier, that's definitely true. The Arleigh Burke class guided missile destroyer is a very capable jack of all trades warship, mostly in the anti air and surface role. The USS Ronald Reagan is a Nimitz class aircraft carrier. Now, if you fancied popping down the shops to buy one, it'll set you back about 7.5 billion pounds. But it does come with 5,000 crew, around 70 aircraft, and it's nuclear powered, so plenty of miles per gallon. Anti-submarine warfare exercises. Military operations. Hunting submarines is all about helicopters, but these F-18s would form a combat air patrol around the carrier, and their takeoff is a bit more dramatic. Sanders, we've ended up in a department run by some kind of Donald Trump, Mike Tyson mutant combo. Welcome to the Ops Room, or the CIC, as our American friends call it. This is the warfighting heart of the ship, where most of the sensors, radars, and weapons are operated from. What was that, Petty Officer Rakes? Nothing, sir. I swear you said Donald Trump. Want to clarify? I think I heard of Mike Tyson as well. If you did, it was only in reference to the fact that you both project great physical intensity, sir. Unflattering. Upper! There's a helo headed for the Samson. Make sure your ass is on it. Why? I don't know why. Just make sure you're on it. Copy, sir. Damn. Mustard's dead. Must have got hit by a dump truck. Sorry. I'm over it. Hey, I thought you'd be out of range by now. I have around five minutes left, huh? How is it? Oh, uh, it's fine. Calling the missus from sea is tricky, but apparently if you stood next to the radar domes on these old destroyers, you could get a solid 10 to 15 mile range from your mobile. Kind of like sticking your car key fob to your head to extend the range. You might look a bit stupid, but it really does work. 
I'm sorry. I messed up. And I'm going to talk to your father as soon as I get back. Stop messing things up, okay? Copy that. I love you. I love you. impact with Hong Kong has also made impact with the Pacific Ocean. We're in the Pacific. From sailor to singer, he's doing well. Be 150 miles south of where we are right now, so it should be right there, but we're not seeing anything. Get me the Samson. Yes, sir. <laughs> Base course 220, speed 25. The whistle you can hear comes from a bosun's call. These have been used for hundreds of years in the Navy to pass orders when it was too noisy for a voice to be heard. To this day, whistling on deck is still a sign of mutiny, as you might interfere with orders being passed by the bosun's call. The bosun's call is one of those great traditions that still has a purpose in the modern Navy and are still used on a daily basis. What the heck is that? Hey, bridge, starboard lookout. I've got an unknown surface contact bearings 232 true, approximately 8,000 yards. Sir? Yeah? You may want to come take a look at this. I am looking at it, Mr. Strogan. On the radar, sir. Something very peculiar. That's a John Paul Jones, right? Yes, sir. Miyoko. Yes, sir, it is. Well, why don't I see? See that. Combat Captain, I have a visual on the track bearing 237 on the horizon. What do you hold in that bearing? Bridge DO, I've got nothing. 237. I'm looking right at it, Mr. Hopper. Find me something. Scope. 237, what do you got? At this point in the Royal Navy, we would start a surface investigate procedure. This prompts the operators in the ops room to check what their sensors are showing them down the requested bearing. In this case, 237 degrees. The operators of the surface radars, air radars, electronic warfare sensors, and the visual optics would all report their findings. Once they've all spoken in sequence, the senior warfare officer on watch would classify the contact accordingly. For example, from an unknown to a friendly merchant ship or hostile alien. That's negative, sir. Scope's clear. Got it, sir. On my camera. What is it? I don't know. Is this some kind of exercise? Probably. Unknown vessel in the vicinity of one five degrees. Three seven minutes north, one five nine degrees, three three minutes west. Request to establish communication with my vessel on VHF channel 16 and identify yourself. Over. John Paul Jones, this is Samson Charlie Oscar. John Paul Jones, Charlie Oscar. Hey, I'd like you to send a team over and take a closer look. No problem. We'll get a team in the water right away. Roger. So you what, boys? This is a head stomper. The commanding officers have had their little chin wag and have decided to send a boarding team to investigate. Boarding teams are usually made up of specially trained sailors from the ship's company. The ship may also carry specially trained Royal Marines for higher risk areas. Boarding ops themselves come under two types. The first is compliant, where the target vessel isn't doing anything stupid and is following your instructions. The second is non-compliant, where the target vessel is trying to give you the runaround and is ignoring your instructions to stop or muster their crew. This is where the Royal Marines get to show off Although in reality, if you have marines embarked on board the vessel, they would be used for both types of boarding. Bravo. Sir, we're unable to contact the Samson. 
404, come in. Do you cop? Put the force of weapons, posture one. Warning red. Weapons tight. I'm on everything loaded. Admiral Neeson here has realized that the shit's about to hit the fan. So he wants to bring his task force up to the highest readiness level. So he issues a few orders. He mentioned weapon postures, which dictate which weapon systems are ready for immediate use. He also mentioned warning red. This is a threat warning, which are usually specific to an environment. For example, air threat warning red due to an enemy aircraft nearby. But at the same time, the surface threat warning may be yellow or white. Weapons tight is a weapon control order. This is similar to the rules of engagement. Weapons tight itself means a unit cannot open fire unless the target is confirmed to be hostile. Whereas Hollywood's favorite, the famous weapons free, allows units to open fire on any target not confirmed to be friendly. Red alert. Sir, are you absolutely sure? It does mean changing the bulb. <laughs> As you can see, the crew are now taking things more seriously and have started wearing their anti-flash hood and gloves. This is fire retardant cotton, which is there to save you from flashes of fire, heat and other battle damage. But it only works if you wear it properly. What the hell is this? I didn't sign up for this bullshit! Yeah, no shit, dude! Five inches offline, should be back in two minutes. Copy that. Signal to jump hole Jones. Fire warning shot. One round, ten mil left offset. Warning shots are a very real naval tactic, but the offset would never be passed in millimeters. It would be always in degrees. Place mount 51 in remote. Back Get your ass to the lead hill, right, sir. Sea Whiz stands for Close In Weapon System, known in the Royal Navy as a phalanx. It fires 20mm rounds at up to 4,500 rounds per minute, that's 75 rounds per second. The telegraphs are kind of like the throttle in your car. The further forward the handles are, the more pitch you're requesting from the propeller blades and therefore the more forward thrust, or if you push backwards, reverse thrust. In this position, it's similar to your car being in neutral. Both spy and fire control radar cannot lock on. Fire! CIC, fire! If the captain wants to start shooting, the order he would actually give is engage, not fire. We would only ever say fire if something is burning.
sir. Rapid continue sir. fire! Well, that didn't go so well for them, but I hope you enjoyed watching and maybe learned a thing or two. If you did, then you know the drill. Please like and subscribe. Till next time, turn to back on deck.